Hello everyone and welcome to the session of Understanding Histograms. I'm Rohan and I have with me Rohit, my colleague from the Nikon India technical team. We are here today to talk about histograms. Well, Rohit, there are a lot of misconceptions, myths and confusion whenever it comes to histograms. People always ask us where we can use them, how we can use them to improve our photography. But most of the times it is based on confusion. People do not understand this concept at all. So before we start and help our viewers understand how we can use histograms, could you just explain what are histograms? Like maybe a definition in photography terms? Sure, absolutely, Rohan. See, uh, histograms, uh, simply put together, is a graphical representation of data, like any other graphs in across industry. So with the photographic point of perspective, histograms would be defining different tonal values across a graph. Basically comprises of the brighter highlights depicted with the whites and the deeper shadows depicted with the blacks. So let's have a look at this apparatus on our right, Rohit. This is a board which is painted half white and half black. Now black represents the darkest tones, which is zero on the histogram, and white represents the brightest tones, which is 255. And right in the middle, we have a gray card, which is 18% gray, which are what our camera meter is attuned to. You know, that, that's what the camera always looks for in any kind of, uh, you know, tonal range. So to demonstrate this, let's take a few images of, you know, the white, the black, and the whole apparatus and explain to our viewers how the histogram works and how does the camera tell you using histograms how you can tune your images and get the colors and the tonal range perfect in your images. Oh, that, that's a great idea. I think that would sort out all the issues related to the histogram. So Rohit, let us review our image. Now we have the first image, which is um, the image of the apparatus, which shows the white, the gray, and the black. And if we look at the representation on our histogram, it shows three distinct peaks. Now these three distinct peaks are actually showing you the three distinct colors or let's say tonal values, tonal values. which is extreme black or darker area or extreme white or the brighter areas and the middle grays. So Rohit, what our users or you know what our viewers should take away from this exercise is that you know there are often questions about what should be the shape of the histogram, where should the histogram be placed to get a good exposure. So to you know for better understanding of our viewers, let's just clarify that whenever you see your histogram moving a little towards the right, that means your images are getting a little overexposed or maybe have more brighter areas. Yeah. Vice versa, if they're moving a little towards the darker areas or towards the left and has more dark shades in the image, then you have probably either an underexposed image or you have too many darker areas in your image. And to probably to get a balanced exposure, you should have good uh, you know, range of tonal value, which is as a little bit of the darks, the brighter areas and the mid-tones. And they should probably not go beyond uh, you know, the boundaries of the histogram. Which is the two and them, the 255. Which is zero and the 255. So to understand this better, let us review a few images and see a few images in real life scenario. That will help our viewers understand. Absolutely. As pictures make a lot of sense, uh, those images will tell you what exactly is going on and that will correlate to the histograms. Rohit, let's have a look at our first image. So here we have this image of a bird and you can see our histogram moving a little too much towards the right side. Absolutely. Which indicates that there are too many brighter areas. And if we look at the image, we see that it is kind of overexposed. overexposed. Yeah. So whenever you see your histograms in real life situation like this or outdoors, and you see it moving a little too much towards the right, it is an indication for you that you have to adjust your exposure to bring it a little more towards the middle to grab more tonal range or get more tonal range in your image. Now let's go to our second image and see what kind of a histogram that creates. Absolutely. Throw it, let's have a look at this image. This is an awesome tiger. I think this was shot in Bandhavgar. And if we see the histogram here, it's kind of peaking in the middle, but it has good tonal range. We have good details in the darker areas as well as in the brighter areas and the mid-tones also look quite nice. Quite nice. So I think this is a good example for a balanced exposure. And you know, somehow I think uh, we can clear out the myth about, you know, people having ideas about the histogram, various shapes, you know, it's either a M or an inverted V or a U, but uh, 
mostly it is not true it i think it mostly depends on the kind of exposure you're having in the in a certain lighting situation so it really isn't like in uh, as you mentioned not an inverted u or a parabola or whatever it is so it's it's basically how we adjust our camera to a certain lighting condition and how we can get a good exposure which has details all across and has a good tonal value or a tonal range in our image. So Rohan, I would like to add something more about the histograms. See, histograms are not very difficult to understand. Once you have a good understanding of the histograms, they actually really help you. They aid you when you're outdoors working in very harsh lights. So it's the histograms which come in very handy. You basically would be looking at the histograms and then you can very well establish whether the exposure that you got is a proper exposure or not. Yeah, because I've seen in a lot of brightly lit days or bright sunny conditions, we can hardly see the output on our uh, camera monitor. Absolutely. So if we have a look at the histograms, we at least know if we've got a good exposure or not. Sure, sure. So that's all we have for histograms. I hope we have been able to help you understand histograms better. I'm sure you would be able to put the learnings to good use while reviewing your images and understanding exposure better. So this is all for this session and we will be back with more interesting sessions soon. These are your Nikon buddies, Rohan and Rohit, signing off.